Oliver Thorne is the executive director of the Veterans Transition Network, which has helped more than 2,000 Afghans flee that country since the Taliban took over last year. The organization, though, has now suspended those efforts. Mr. Thorne joins me from Vancouver. Uh, Oliver Thorne, thanks for taking time to speak with me tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, why has your organization ended those efforts to get more Afghans out of the country and to the safety of Canada? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it was a really difficult decision to make to begin winding down uh, our efforts doing this work. Um, you know, the, there's a, a bit of nuance to the message. So first and foremost, what we've closed down is our public facing fundraising campaign to support these efforts mm -hmm. um, for, for a variety of reasons. The, the main one being that what we've really seen is that over the past number of months, this is beginning to transform um, from an emergency evacuation effort to what is going to be probably a years long migration effort. Um, the reality is that, uh, you know, we entered this, uh, this work really with the intent of a 30 day fundraising campaign to support some of that internal movement right. uh, of Afghans uh, into Kabul in the lead up to the evacuation. Um, but what really this morphed into was a nine month, uh, you know, campaign of, of evacuation work. We're seeing that that's now transforming into a long-term migration effort. Um, we're still going to continue to assist uh, and, and do what we can to, to help people with migration for, for a number of months. But ultimately, we begin to need to uh, start turning our attention back to our work with veterans here right. in Canada. Uh, what do you think of the government's efforts to, to try and get uh, more Afghans to Canada? Are you satisfied with what you're seeing? Um, you know, I've, I've said this through a number of interviews that I've done, and I'll say it again because it's true. You know, we've connected with some really hardworking staff at IRCC and Global Affairs Canada um, who are working overtime, doing everything that they can to affect change and to help bring Afghans to Canada. Um, where we're really frustrated is with government policy that is really hampering the process. Um, well, so to policies? answer the question... Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, first and foremost, we no longer have any type of consular service in Afghanistan. So what that means is that we can no longer complete the application process for eligible Afghans who are coming to Canada uh, within Afghanistan. They have to travel to a third country to do that final mm -hmm. step of the process. So that then means that there's a whole host of other documentation and travel requirements that they need to meet in order to get into that third country and to do that final step of processing. And that is where we're really seeing for the majority of applicants, that's the bottleneck that is slowing down this process right. and making it more challenging. So does that bring us back? I mean, a number of uh, people have suggested, look, what's what's needed here is, you know, Canada needs to waive these requirements for biometric data and so on, which is challenging, of course, to obtain in a, in a country like Afghanistan, and instead supply this single-use uh, travel document that would allow Afghans to get to this country. It's all they'd be uh, required to have and allow them to uh, transit to Canada through this third country. Is it as simple as that? Um, yeah. <laughs> Hard to say, you know, we're, we're not working directly within the government. We don't have the full visibility on, uh, you know, these policy issues. We know for certain, based on what we've seen with, um, you know, the Ukraine evacuation, we've seen some relaxing of biometric requirements mm -hmm. for some people within that population. Um, you know, Ukrainian refugees being absolutely very deserving, uh, you know, of peace and stability and the ability to come to Canada. Um, we haven't seen that same level of flexibility extended to Afghan applicants, which is frustrating. We would like to see that. Um, we know that the ability to waive biometrics for some folks below a certain age, above a certain age, would make a big impact. Um, the ability to provide single-use travel right. documents, uh, provided that they're accepted by other countries, would also make a big impact. You you, you touched on on Ukraine, and we've we, we've seen efforts in this country to bring uh, to resettle Ukrainian refugees. The Minister of Defense Anita Anand uh, spoke about the differences in being able to quickly resettle Ukrainian refugees uh, at a, uh, a parliamentary committee last night uh, versus how challenging it is to resettle Afghans because of the Taliban government that's uh, a known terrorist organization actively oppressing citizens and trying to block them from fleeing, and. Uh, you know, essentially that was the main reason why this has become such a complicated issue for Canada and, and helping Afghans get to Canada. Do you accept that explanation for the delays when you look at what's happening in Ukraine and what's happening in, Can in Afghanistan? Yeah, 
Uh, that's a tough question. You know, I, I can understand that concern. I can understand the concern with resettling individuals and large families from, uh, you know, a country which is now under terrorist rule. Um, uh, I understand that the challenge, I understand that there's risk involved with that, but my response would be that there was risk involved for Afghan interpreters and for their families when they volunteered to support and protect Canadian forces, soldiers in Afghanistan. They took on that risk um, in order to help our soldiers and to hopefully build a better future for their country. And I think morally, Canada owes them some level of risk when we reach out and help them in their time of need. Um, and again, I don't have full policy awareness of all of these issues, but uh, I know because veterans have told us unanimously that these vet that these uh, Afghan interpreters had a direct impact on making their mission possible and in many cases saving Canadian lives. And they did that at risk to themselves. So I feel personally that Canada has a moral obligation to assume some level of risk in the help that we provide to them. All right, Oliver Thorne. Um the Executive Director of the Veterans Transition Network. Uh, thanks for your perspective this evening. Good to talk to you. Thanks very much for having me.